Alright, so talking about five albums that have either influenced me or impacted me or were important to my life in some way. Um, the first album that I have to talk about uh, is Jason Mraz's Mr. A to Z. Um, because I think this is where my kind of lifetime interest in and uh, I guess relationship with music begins. Um, uh, my parents actually bought this album uh, around the time it came out. I was in about sixth grade at a time when you're kind of starting to discover yourself and you want to create an identity for yourself. You're kind of coming out of being a child and kind of starting to think about what you're going to be as an adult. Um, so my parents bought this album. It was the first new album they'd bought in I think quite a while at that point, um, and it was the first new album that I would really taken an interest in. Um, before that, I mean, I'd been exposed to just stuff on the radio, uh, to music of my parents, um, but this album just really grabbed my interest. Um, I really got into it, I really kind of appreciated it. Musically, um, I really can't think of too many albums that do what it does so well, which is that every song on this album sounds different, completely different. It's an incredibly diverse album, um, probably better than anything that he's put out ever since. Um, but that was the first album that really grabbed my attention, that I really got into. Uh, I wanted to listen to more by him. I bought his first album and listened to that, but um, this is really where, I guess, my connection with music begins is with this album. The second album is the debut album from Daughtry. And in middle school and high school for me was kind of the height of popularity of American Idol. And uh, it was something that I got into. Um, I watched it semi-religiously. <laughs> um, and the first season that I watched, I was in sixth grade, again, and uh, the season that I watched was season five, where uh, Chris Daughtry was one of the competitors, and he really made an impression on me. I thought he was an incredible presence, an incredibly good singer, he had a very powerful voice, um, but a little bit more than that, um, at that age, kind of in sixth grade, where you're kind of heading into adolescence, you're kind of looking for almost role models for the way you want to be as an adult. Um, you're looking for kind of people to model your own expression of yourself after your, I guess, masculinity or femininity. Um, and I'll admit I was kind of like a nerdy little kid, so I feel like I was trying to kind of distance myself from that, um, which for me, I decided to do that by listening to a lot of hard rock and modern metal and punk rock and styles of music that I felt kind of had an element of edginess and masculinity to them. And to that end, I kind of, I guess, looked to Chris Daughtry and to people like him, like Bo Bice and Constantine Marolis, as almost masculine role models, as kind of like what a man of rock should be. Um, so I guess that's why I was, I guess, so drawn to uh, Chris Daughtry as a performer. Um, and then his debut album came out, and I, of course, got it, listened to it. Um, and it had a lot of that hard rock edge, but um, it also wasn't afraid to kind of talk about problems and talk about relationships, and uh, that was also something that I could appreciate. Uh, the third album is U2's How to Dismantle an Atomic Bomb. This uh, kind of has a personal connection to me because um, my mom is a huge fan of U2. It's something that we share, and it's something that uh, we've kind of been able to bond over. Um, I got to see them in a concert uh, with my mom and, and my dad, um, and that was really just one of the best experiences I've ever had in my life, and it was a great thing that I got to share with her. Um, so, uh, I guess my association with U2 kind of goes back to, uh, 7th or 8th grade, um, U2 has given 
open permission for all of their music to be used in religious services as long as uh, any money that that service raised goes to certain charities. So my youth group, my church, were organizing this U2 service. And um, I started listening to their music and really got into them. Um, the first song that I really connected with of theirs was City of Blinding Lights off this album. Um, and while I don't think this is their best album, it's the one that got me hooked on U2 and got me interested in them. And uh, I guess that's why it's the most significant to me, because this isn't necessarily my favorite albums, but albums that are the most meaningful to me. Um, so to that end, um, this is an album that I've just kept revisiting. Um, and kind of gain new appreciation for over time. The fourth album to talk about is Green Day's American Idiot. This was an album that I didn't get into until a few years after it had been released, but I think everyone around middle school or early high school goes through a phase of like teenage angst where you want to be edgy and you want to be angry and you want to fight against things, and to that end I kind of fell in love with the song Boulevard of Broken Dreams around 8th grade. I thought it was just kind of a fantastic, edgy, angsty song. Um, and then throughout high school I ended up listening to the whole American Idiot album and over time gained a bigger appreciation for it as um, kind of a record of the way people were feeling during the early 2000s, during the age of Bush and Iraq and a lot of the anger that a lot of people felt during that time. And I think it's an album that encapsulates that probably better than any other um, to an extent I would consider it kind of one of the albums of my generation. And um, also in that time where it came out, the mid-2000s, was kind of the golden age of pop punk and emo and teen angst music, um, which is a genre as a whole that I have a pretty big appreciation for because it um, especially when I was in high school, dealt with a lot of themes that I could relate to, themes of uh, hating your hometown and wanting more out of life and I guess kind of feeling underappreciated by the people around you, um, which is something I could kind of relate to. Um, so this was, to an extent, the beginning of my appreciation for pop punk emo teen angst music, which I still listen to. I've been to the Warp Tour for the past three summers, so. Um, that's why that's significant, I guess. And then the fifth album, um, moving to something a bit more recent, is uh, Daft Punk's Random Access Memories. This album came out the summer between my freshman and sophomore years of college, uh, when I was living at home back in this small town that I hated being in. And uh, I kind of just kept coming back to this album. I listened to it a lot that summer, and I've listened to it a lot during college. Um, and I can appreciate it on a couple levels. Uh, it's got a, lot, got a lot of great just like dance tracks and because I'm a DJ and I like to dance, I like to go to clubs, so I have an appreciation for songs like Get Lucky and Give Life Back to Music, but a lot of these songs also have uh, some kind of deeper lyrics to them. There's one in particular that I've felt a greater connection to as I'm kind of heading into my last year of college, heading towards graduation. Uh, a song called Fragments of Time, which is about kind of being in a place you don't want to leave, but you can't stay there. But in the end, you always have your memories of this place, you always have these fragments of time, and these moments that you keep coming back to, which is kind of how I'm feeling about college, um, kind of heading toward the exit, toward the end game, um, that it's been just an incredible experience. Um, that I'm kind of getting ready to be done with and to move on from. But, uh, yeah, so um, I guess more than any other, that's the album that I'm going to look back on as kind of defining my college experience. Um, so, there you have it, those are my five albums. Familiar faces I've never seen Living the gold